Okay. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome in to a Tuesday Talks session. Here with me, Uma. I am the CEO of the Lotus and Light Metaphysical Center, and I love to come on on Tuesdays and Thursdays and do some talks for the community at large to share my knowledge as a metaphysical teacher, a spiritual mentor, healer, and psychic mediumship mentor. So for those of you that don't know me, you can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thelotusandthelight.com. All right, welcome in, welcome in everyone. So today we are talking about numerology and unlocking the mysteries of numerology. Um, I'm very excited to teach this or to talk about this because I have been a teacher of numerology, uh, gosh, since 2010, I believe, because in 2010, I started a mentorship program. It was called, gosh, Mentorship for the Beginner Intuitive. I think that's what it was called. I, I can't remember because it was so long ago and it's been through so many different changes throughout the years right but it was I believe it was. Um, mentorship for the beginner intuitive my earlier students could tell me or, or tell us and. Uh, one of the classes was uh, a combination of astrology and numerology. Okay. And. Um, I loved it because once people got to understand the power of numbers, it's like whoosh, their whole world opened up and then things just started to make more sense. Right. And uh, in terms of just like people would make sense of the things they were seeing, right? Like 111, 222, 333. Um, and they've started to realize, wow, this universe is um, intricate. It's amazing. There's so many synchronicities. If I just pay attention, if I get quiet and I tune in and I tap in. And numerology concerns with that, right? Numerology is the study of numbers. So I wanted to come on here today and share my knowledge about numerology and why I love numerology so much. I. I'm a little bit disheveled, truth be told, because just before I came on my folder of like all my amazing information, right, just fell. And I have over 20 classes in that folder. So I was scrambling to pick up all the pieces and put them together so that we can have this event here today. But I have it. I have my notes and um, we're going to get into it. All right. We are going to get into it. Might be out of order, but you know, we'll do. Okay, so let's start first by talking about what is numerology. Numbers have been around since the dawn of time. They developed from symbols in nature, making them our original language. Numerology is the science of diving, of divining information about life through the numbers. The foundation of numerology has been credited to Pythagoras, a Greek mathematician born in the 6th century BCE, who is considered the founder of the science of geometry. So numerology history is ancient. It's been around since like the dawn of time. And it's not like I know a lot of people look at the kind of like world that I live in. And they think of it like, oh, that's the woo woo world. It's like all made up and fantasies and unicorns and stuff like that. And then when I start talking about the work that I do as a healer, as a metaphysical teacher, there's actually a lot of science and study and math behind it. 
Now we know math is important. We know it as the first language of the universe. It's how the universe is run, right? So it's important to understand numerology and incorporate numerology in your daily life. I mean, someone like me, I don't do anything without numbers. Like if one of my friends call me up and say, Uma, I just bought a house and you know, um, the address is 1489. In my head, I'm calculating. You know, nine and one is 10, eight and four is 12, 22. Ooh, double digits, 22, two and two is four. Solid foundation for a house, right? So it, it gets kind of like that once you start to understand numbers and you understand the power of numbers. So what else can numerology do? Well, you can discover an origin of conflict or success in life because you can have opposing numbers. We're going to talk about that. Some numbers just don't get along with each other and some numbers are compatible or in sync with each other. So if you find out that there's opposing numbers, you can create ways to make change about that. Numerology aids in recognition of desires and life purpose. That is the major thing I love about numerology because I do this service for my clients called a soul plan reading where I look at the astrology and numerology at their time of birth, their date of birth, their name on their birth certificate. And I calculate what their original intent was. So I do things like the life pat number, the destiny number, the soul urge number, right? As part of their soul plan reading. And in doing those things, we found like, sometimes people come to me and say, I feel lost. I feel confused. I don't know what path I'm supposed to be on. I don't know why I like what I like or don't like what I don't like. And numerology has a big hand in helping with that to get people to understand like why they do certain things or why they don't do certain things, right? Like for instance, I'm a life pat nine, which is the humanitarian, right? That's like Mahatma Gandhi, Bob Marley, some of the most famous people, they came to the planet to elevate the consciousness of the planet. The nine number in numerology is the most evolved number because it's the last number. The numbers in numerology go from one to nine. So with people who have a nine number, they're very evolved. So we call them the humanitarians because at the highest level of evolution is service, service to others. When you're younger, like say you're life pat one, you know, you're more concerned about self, right? You're more concerned about self. But when you're a higher number, you're more concerned about the status of the world um, and humankind and the community. So I love what I do by having my metaphysical center. I focus on the community. I focus on creating communities wherever I go because that's being in service, all right? Um, what else can numerology do? It gives a clear path to personal and career success. It can reveal compatibility or reasons for lack of compatibility in relationships. It can determine the energy, energetic vibe of a place, home, or business location. Yeah, so have you ever been in a place and it just didn't feel right, right? it might be the energy vibration of that place. Like I'll tell you guys right now, when I added the numbers up of my home, right? It came to a number that I didn't like. So I changed the vibration of my home, right? Because there's ways you can do that. You can change the vibration of your home. Sometimes people hire me to do that, to like, assess the energy of their home and make certain changes to kind of give them a better vibration. So with that being said, there's so many things that numerology can help you do. So many things. Um, now in numerology, you can calculate different numbers, right? And the main numbers that you can calculate are the life path number, the soul number, the personality number, the destiny number. Those are like some of the main things that you can calculate. You can calculate other numbers too. Your personal year, your personal month, your attitude number. But for the purpose of this uh, talk that I'm doing, 
I'm going to talk about the life path, the soul number, the personality, and the destiny number. Okay? The life path number describes the path your life must take in order for you to be happy. This is probably the most important number in your chart because it can reveal the source of unhappiness currently happening in your life. I'll give you an example about this, right? When I was doing a reading for a woman, a numerology reading, we calculated her life path number was a five. And she was always having difficulties in um, relationships. Now, the five is the adventurer. That's the person who likes to travel, and try new things and um, eat at different restaurants and have all these experiences. And it's not that they can't settle down, it's just that they can't be in like a boring relationship or a relationship with someone who just wants to say like, sit on the couch. So once we calculated her life path number, she very much agreed with it. She's like, I love to travel. I love to try new things. I love to stay at hotels and, get on flights and eat at new restaurants. So then we understood that the kind of person she was dating was not good for her because the people that she tended to tended to pick were people that just wanted to go to work, come home, relax at home, lay on the couch, go to bed, do it all over again. Nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with that. But this kind of person needs somebody who's willing to want to do more. So once she realized that, she went out into the world and I heard from her months later and she said, Uma, I'm so excited. I met a five, <laughs> right? She ended up meeting a guy, found out he was a life pat five and now they just travel all over the world and have fun and enjoy life. So finding out your life pat number can give you an idea of what would create happiness in your life and also uncover the areas of unhappiness in your life. That's the main one. Now, another number is the destiny number. The destiny number describes your life purpose and your goal in life. Some say this is the reason you manifested on this planet at this time. So it's where, where you're going to end up eventually, no matter what path you take in life, you are going to end up here. This is your destiny. Now there's two things you need to, there's one thing you need to know about these two numbers, the life path number and the destiny number cannot be changed. These numbers are based off of your birthday and your name on your birth certificate, right? So even if you get married and you change your name, that does not affect your destiny. Your destiny is your destiny. Regardless if you get married, you change your name, whatever, right? So when you calculate the life path number and the destiny number, those two do not change. Those are your permanent numbers, but there are other numbers that can be changed. For instance, uh, your soul urge number, it's based off of your name. So you could have soul urges right? What is a soul urge? It describes what you feel on the inside and may not be seen by others. It's something you feel at your core and cannot be faked. So you can have, let's say your soul urge number is a five from your birth name, right? Which is you love to travel, you love to be adventurous, you love to go out and do things and whatever. But then let's say you get married to somebody, you take on their last name, and now your soul urge number changes to, let's say, a nine. Now you want to be of service to people. Now you want to look at the collective community and contribute where you can, right? Your number changes, your, your name changes, your numbers change, your energy change. For some people, this is where we can detect sometimes a relationship is not good for you because I've done some readings on people where they got married, they were unhappy in their marriage. And then when we looked at the numbers, the change from who they used to be to where they are now was very drastic for them. And they didn't like it. 
I've actually, in my classes, I've actually had people change their names. You know, I've had like, say, a Jennifer go down to a Jen, because when she calculated her name as, say, Jennifer Smith, and she changed it to Jen Smith, those numbers were actually better, right? So you can do things like that with these numbers that you can change about your soul urge number, your personality number. Personality number describes how people see you and what you show to the world. It may be different than your soul number description if you tend to be one way by yourself and another way in public. Uh, the personality number is a great number to know because it gives you an idea of how people see you. Like when I, when I did my personality number, I was like, I'm not this, <laughs> right? I am not this. But then come to find out, I sure am. I sure am. And uh, it, it, this is the way people saw me. This is the way people saw me and I couldn't d detest that, right? So those are ways you can use numerology to calculate your numbers. The life path number, the soul number, the personality number, the destiny number. Now remember, you can also have other numbers, right? You can have a house number, you can have um, a personal year. I personally like the personal year numbers because it tells you like what, what year you're in and how the year is going to be. So this is one thing you guys want to know. Okay. Um, the personal year. We live in nine year cycles, according to numerology. We live in nine year cycles. And depending on where you are in your cycle, it can be different things. So year one, I'm actually in a year one. I've ended a nine year cycle that began in 2015. So 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 right? So last year was 2023. That was my nine year. It was a very, very difficult year, by the way. Um, nine years, it's a lot of endings. Have you guys ever had that? Do you notice, you know, that you've had some years where you're just like, wow, you know, this is a, this is a tough year, right? This is a tough year. Um, that would be a nine year. A one year is new beginnings. Like ever since this year started it's been a little bit rocky they actually say in the nine year cycles like the last the, the last two years plus the first year are the hardest years in cycles so year eight year nine and year one tend to be the hard years because you're like okay i really you know i really can't can't continue on like this <laughs> i cannot continue on like this it's a lot so I find, though, that once you have an understanding about it, it should make it easier. But even with that, I can't really tell because I had somebody who, um, you know, she knows that she's uh, in a nine year and that things are going to be difficult. We've talked about this. And I told her, like, don't make any rash decisions because that's how, you know, that's how things start to spiral and, and get out of control. And uh, she spiraled. She spiraled and everything went out of control. But, you know, there, there's that, right? That sometimes you know things and then sometimes you, you, you know things, but you're still going to respond to your emotions and stuff. But side note, this is why I love studying spiritual topics, things like astrology, numerology, um, the planets, the star seed. I, I like studying these things because I feel it gives me more emotional control. And I keep saying this all the time, to be in this world, this world that's plugged into the matrix, your superpower is having emotional control. Because all of this world, AKA the matrix, all of this matrix we live in is geared to rile you up emotionally. So if you can have emotional control, right? If you can have emotional control, uh, you become like a superhero in this world because you cannot be triggered. 
or you can't blame your triggers for causing a disruption that it does cause. But that's just my little my little side note. So I wanted to talk to you guys about the actual numbers, like what the energy of the numbers are. Um, let me pull this up. Like I said, I dropped my, my folder, so everything is just kind of chaotic right now. But I can, I can do this. Um, pull it up this way. And I'm always available if anybody wants a numerology reading. Usually in a numerology reading, I will calculate your life path number, your destiny number, your soul number, your personality number, your personal year number, those five numbers, all right, is what I usually calculate. Um, it takes me about like a 30 minute reading because we talk, we chat, we talk about all the different things about it and um, we go from there. Okay, so each number has a unique vibration. We talked about that before, right? And I'm going to tell you what the vibration is of each number. Of course, this was the wrong one. So in numerology, the number one is associated with determination, independence, and opportunity, right? That's why we say like people with life path one, we call them the leaders because they are ambitious, they're go-getters, um, you know, they tend to want to be, they're very independent, you know, don't ever try to tell a life path one what to do it's just not going to work out well right so um that one energy resonates with the vibrations of new beginnings creations independence uniqueness right just think of like a one solitary okay um and it's definitely like a very masculine number because the numbers do have like masculine feminine tendencies as well now, the number two, think about two people, right? There's like an energy of partnership there, right? Um, so with two, it's about um, partnerships, the two people, life pack two people tend to be very, very psychic because the number two is somehow associated with the moon. Like how number one is associated with the sun, um, number two is associated with the moon. So there's a very strong psychic intuitive uh, ability here with two, the two energy. Uh, twos represent intuition, emotions, right, sensitivity. When you think of a life path two number, um, I think they're called the mediators. Yep, the life path twos are the mediators. Actually, I have my paperwork right here. What am I doing? I don't have to do it off my head. <laughs> yep, so this is about harmony. This is about balance, right? Affection. Um, they, these, anybody with any sort of twos in their chart, they don't like conflict at all. These people avoid conflict like the plague. They just don't like it. And twos, unlike ones, do not like to be alone. Nope, nope, nope. They need to be around a group of people, socializing, partnerships, friends, family, all, all the above. So two energy carries that spirit of community. Now three is an energy of creativity, right? We actually call people with the life path three, the communicators. Um, this is about per somebody who loves creativity, communication, connecting with people. Threes also have like an entertainment energy to them. In fact, I think 
a lot of actors and actresses, singers, songwriters are threes because they're the highly artistic, highly creative people. So three energy has that like artistic energy to it. Four, when I think of four, I think of a table. A table has four legs. It's a very solid, stable structure. So when I think of four, I think of foundation. And we call people with the life path four, we call them the teachers, right? Uh, these, this energy has the energy of seeking knowledge and wisdom, logic, right? Building foundation, setting foundation. We've talked about five. Five is the energy of change. So whereas four is foundational, five is change, upset, chaos, right? Not sticking to a schedule. So we talked about the people that are life path fives. They are called the adventurers, right? I mentioned that before. These people love their freedom, love fun, love exciting adventures. Um, sometimes it's hard to settle down. Could you imagine if you're a Sagittarius and a life path five? Like, are you a lifelong bachelor or bachelorette, right? It's just, I love it. That's why we say, you know, this is why I say to everybody, you, you can't put everybody in the same category. Not everybody wants the same thing. There's people who literally are born to be married. I have a lot of friends from high school, born to be, they married right out of high school and they're still married to this day. And that, love those people love their marriage love it all for them but that was just not it for me i like the fact i'm a sad rising i like the fact that i live life i've been in and out of many relationships and now in my later years i'm settling down i feel like i had the best of both worlds you know um that might be my sagittarius rising energy there now life pat six six is the energy of nurturing right so six is the part the the energy of community nurturing if you're a life path six we call you the nurturer because you nurture everybody that you're around now i met a woman i did a reading for a woman who was a life path six and she was married but she went through a divorce and a lot of people might think huh but these people love relationships love nurturing why would she get a divorce their peace their peace is very very important to them so a life path six will divorce somebody if they are affecting their peace. And also she didn't have any children, but she had a ton of pets. And I asked her, I said, at work, are you like the work mom? And she said, absolutely. You know, she's the one always bringing uh, baked goods and cleaning up the kitchen and doing whatever and whatever, you know, she's, uh, she's that person likes taking care of people. So life path six are the nurturers. Now you have a life path, uh, a seven number is a number of introspection, reflection, meditation, spending time in nature, right? Uh, there's a lot of spiritual energy around a seven number. So if you're a life path seven, we call you the spiritual seeker, the faith seeker. Uh, there's a lot of natural psychic ability, natural intuition with seven. You know, if you are in a personal year seven, that might be the year you just don't really want to go out. You want to stay inside. You want to journal. You want to meditate. You want to be in nature. You know, you just, just kind of want to hang out, hang out by yourself. So this is why it's so important to honor the energies you feel. Sometimes I feel we're so committed to our schedules that we don't take into account that we are human beings living through these different number years and we are responding to the energy you got to respond to the energy if you're in a seven year and you're a party animal and you're feeling the call to pull in guess what most of you are going to do you're going to ignore that call and you're going to go party it up right and then you get sick or you don't feel so good or things happen. And then you, you sit there and you wonder why, why is this my karma? Is this God, is this the universe? Or is it just you not honoring your energy and what you're being called to do? So seven is the energy of pulling in reflection, introspection. Eight is the number of 
abundance. Think of eight, when you turn it sideways, it looks like the infinity number, right? So someone um, with the life path eight, we call them the executive. Uh, they're really here to establish financial security. That's really what they're all about, you know? Um, but it's not about just they want money. It's about stability in life. They may have had past lifetimes where they did not have financial security. So this lifetime, they were like, nope, this is what I want to do. I want to have financial security. Uh, they're very good at finding ways to keep the money coming in. But that is their drive. Their drive is money, you know, and it's a, a life pat eight is a challenge to me because I'm a life pat nine. And we're going to talk about that in a second, what a nine is. But uh, people with life pat eight energy is, a, is very much a challenge to me because I know deep down it's about the money for them. And I wish more eights would just be honest about it, but they don't. They try to say it's something else or I'm interested in something else or I'm doing this because, but you're, the real drive is the money. And I think I would respect the eight more if they just owned it. If they, I did have a student uh, a couple years ago and she was a life pat eight and I really respected her because she was very clear. I am about the money. <laughs> I'm gonna take these classes. I'm gonna become a healer. I'm gonna become a teacher and I'm gonna charge and I'm gonna make money and I'm gonna love doing what I do, but I'm gonna get that money, you know? <laughs> and uh, I loved it, I loved it because she was living her energy. So the executive, and then finally we have the life pat nine. The nine energy is about service. Remember the nine energy is the most highly evolved number. So once you've gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you've gone through all the stages of life, You end up at that self-actualization moment where you realize life is not about yourself. Life is about everyone and the community and humankind. Like my goal in life, my unspoken, not unspoken because I talk about it, but like my unwritten goal in life is to positively change one million people's lives for the better. And I'll never know the number. I will never know because sometimes you help people and they don't tell you, but they know that you help them, but they don't tell you. Um, but I have a feeling like when I go to the other side, I'll know. It might be something like one million and two, <laughs> right? We can hope, we can hope. But if you are a life pat nine, you are humanitarian. Uh, the nine number is an evolved number. It's a strong number with a very strong, solid, sound spiritual base. Um, nine energy ap operates on principle, on ethics, on integrity. I tend to lose a lot of friends. I literally just lost a really good friend this past weekend because she did something wrong. She didn't want to admit that she did something wrong. And I, I wasn't even going to hold her to it um, because you know I know how people are. I understand human nature, but what I couldn't do was agree with her. I couldn't. I couldn't agree in good consciousness and in, in my integrity, in my faith and my ethics. I could not agree with her about what her thought process was. And I, you know, silly me, right? Because I always have these high ideals. Silly me thought that we had such a strong friendship that she would respect me for being very strong and saying, no, I don't agree with you on this. And if you're going to do this, you're on your own because I'm not going to follow you down this road. So instead, she did not. She uh, stood 10 toes down and then cut me out of her life. And that tends to happen a lot because, um, you know, I don't really cater to uh, people, people's whims, fads, whimsies, trends. I don't do that. I am going to honor what I feel. You know, I have a very strong spiritual core and I got to do what's right, you know? So if you come across somebody with a nine energy, nines do have an authentic regard for humanity. Uh, we will sacrifice our own needs. We will sacrifice friendships. We will sacrifice um, being popular or well-liked for the sake of doing the right thing. It's just, it's just who we are. And um, right. And, you know, a lot of times I, you know, I get sad 
I have to tell you guys this from a personal perspective of a nine, because even uh, my partner, he tells me all the time, he's like, you are who you are. And I get down, like, I get really mad at myself because I'm like, why can't I just cheat? Why can't I just cut corners? You know, why can't I just do what everybody, everybody's doing it? Why can't I do it? But I won't let me. I would not let me do it because I have, like, I always just believe in doing the right thing. And that's rare in this world because it's so easy to cut corners or cheat or lie or steal to get ahead. And I don't, I don't do any of it. And that's probably why I don't get ahead, you know, because I, I just, I'm going to do the right thing. You know, I'm going to do the right thing. And I think it's taken me a long time. I'm 46 years old at the time of this recording. And it's taken me a long time to finally reach this place where I'm like, okay, okay, I'll never be wildly successful. I'll never be popular. I'll never, you know, get there because I refuse to do what is required. Now, I don't want to sound like a downer, but I have to tell you guys this. A lot of people that are very, very, very successful, wealthy, popular, famous, they had to do some grimy stuff to get there. They had to, when you start hearing the stories come out, like think about the P. Diddy situation and the Cassie and the, you know, um, Lord, the wines, like when you hear about all this stuff, right? People have to do a lot of grimy stuff to get to the top. And I just, in good consciousness, I can't do it. I can't do it. If I get there, it's not by climbing on anybody else. It's just by being me, doing honest work and hoping and praying people appreciate what I do and compensating me for what I do. That is from the words, the mouth of a nine, okay? From the mouth of a nine. But anyways, I could talk on and on about numerology. As you can clearly tell, I love numerology. I teach numerology. I do numerology readings. Um, you know, so I just wanted to come on here and share with my with you guys for this Tuesday talks my information, my knowledge about numerology. I hope it's helpful to some of you. And of course, if any of you want either a 30 minute numerology reading or a soul plan reading where I combine your numerology with your astrology from your time of birth to figure out like why you were born, what you're here for, um, you can definitely hit me up through my social media, through my website, thelotusandthelight.com, through uh, my um, email, right? Info at thelotusandthelight.com. I had to think about that for a second and ask me about those things. I just also wanted to do a big shout out and uh, remind you guys that um, I have my annual mentorship program coming up in January. And I know it's like a far ways away, but I only take 20 people. And for anybody who is interested in following up with me about that, like it's a four month course starting in January. We meet every Saturday at my center, the Lotus and Light in Northern Virginia from, uh, I think it's like 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. I think it's three hours long. And we meet every Saturday for four months. You can skip classes. You know, it is what it is. Life happens. I do record myself for those of you that skip classes or can't make the class and I can send you the recording. That's not a problem. And, um, you know, it, one of those classes is numerology, where I teach you how to calculate the numbers uh, that you could do for yourself, for your friends, you know, your community. You can use that as well. There's other great topics in that program, by the way. The program is called the Sacred Lotus Self-Exploration Program. Okay. The Sacred Lotus Self-Exploration Program. And it starts in January, Jan Saturday, January 25th. If you want information about that program, you go to my website because you can find out more about it and RSVP for it from there. All right, we only take 20 people. And uh, if you did decide from today, August, you know, that you wanted to be in it, 
and you signed up on prepaid, just remember all payments made are non-refundable, non-transferable. So don't sign up unless you are absolutely sure this is something you can do. Because I don't like to be teaching to people that are you know, one foot in, one foot out. If you're coming to learn, if you're coming to actually do something and create change in your life and have this transformational journey, you got to commit to it. Because I'm committing to it to give up my Saturdays, my 16 Saturdays in a row, right? So if I'm giving that up, you got to give that up too. I'm just saying. All right. That's it for now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this um, talk. Wherever you're watching this, whether you're watching this on my podcast, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on wherever you're watching this, please drop me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this talk. And if you feel numerology is something you should explore. I hope you do. I hope that you do. All right. Thanks, guys.